Uh, how was it? Oh, right. Jeff, wh what was it like? Was everything you imagined? Uh, I'm going to answer that question, but just real quick. Please. I, I want to thank a few people. Um, first of all, all of the engineers at Blue Origin who have toiled hard to get this done. The people who build the vehicle, all of our manufacturing people. This is a big team. They've been working on it for many years, and they have done an extraordinary job of building the most reliable, most beautiful, uh, most fun, I mean, I can vouch for that. I'll get to that in a second, vehicle. Um, and we owe them a deep uh, gratitude. And uh, the people who kept us safe today, who operated the vehicle, our trainers, everybody, it's just huge. Uh, I also want to thank the town of Van Horn. This is a small and amazing little town. Um, and, uh, you know, we're making a, a dent in it. And we appreciate you uh, for allowing us to be part of your town. And, uh, and then I also I want to thank uh, every Amazon employee and every Amazon customer, because you guys paid for all of this. <laughs> so seriously, for every Amazon customer out there and every Amazon employee, thank you from the bottom of my heart very much. Uh, it's very appreciated. <laughs> And, uh, you know, now, on to how it felt. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> my expectations were high, and they were dramatically exceeded. The, uh, the, we were talking about this a little bit uh, in the car ride on the way back. And, I, I don't know, the, the, the zero-G piece may have been one of the biggest surprises because it felt so normal. It felt so like almost like we were as humans evolved to be in that environment, which I know is impossible, but it felt so serene and peaceful and the floating. It's actually much nicer than being in full one gravity. Um, uh, it's a very pleasurable experience just from the sheer, just the way it feels, the tactfulness of it. Uh, that it, you know, the, the most profound piece of it for me was looking out at the Earth and looking at the Earth's atmosphere, every astronaut, everybody who's been up into space, they say this, that it changes them and they look at it and they're kind of amazed and, and awestruck by the Earth and its beauty, but also by its fragility. And I can vouch for that. Um, when I look out, you know, when we're sitting in this room and when we're driving our cars and we're moving around the planet in our normal ways, the atmosphere is so gigantic. You know, we're these tiny little things, and the planet, the atmosphere is so big. But when you get up above it, what you see is it's actually incredibly thin. It's this tiny little fragile thing. And as we move about the planet, we're damaging it. And, you know, so that is, um, you know, that's, uh, that, that's a very profound. It's one thing to recognize that intellectually. It's another thing to actually see with your own eyes how fragile it really is. And that was amazing. Who, who wants to add? Oliver, you want to tell us how it was? Our first paying customer? You get, feel like you got your money's worth, sir? Yeah, push up, push up. <laughs> no, it was so amazing to see it from above and to move around. Like, yeah, I totally agree. It feels so natural, like almost like we should be doing this. <laughs> and I hope that we are one of the first, and let's hope that many, many more people can do this. Because this experience you should share with more and more people. It's so amazing. And a special congratulations to you on becoming the youngest person to have ever flown in space. Woo! Thank you. You brought with you up there the next generation of space explorers, but certainly uh, another flag up there, the Netherlands. Yeah. To everybody out there, the Netherlands, there's the new Dutch flying man. There you go. <laughs> what, Mark, you should say that thing you told me in the car about the G-forces. I thought that was really interesting. Well, I was uh, I was surprised. I mean, they had told us what you know the, what the G-forces would feel like on the way up, and um, you know, again, it's one of those things that you hear about and you anticipate, but um, you know, you really feel them on the way up. It was incredibly exhilarating, and then um, you know, on the way back down, what I had not anticipated. So we hit five Gs briefly on the way back down. Um, and that's that's a lot of pressure. And unfortunately, during the um, the the, uh, the 
that. Uh, yeah, status check for each, a, each astronaut by the time they got to astronaut demo, which was the name I was flying under. We were at five Gs, and so they were like, <laughs> astronaut demo, how you doing? I was like, I'm doing okay. <laughs> I had a hard time, had a hard time responding, but uh, I'm not sure what that video footage will look like. Probably not very pretty, but by it was, way, it was so you, exciting. If you haven't figured it out yet, uh, well, Wally might be the oldest person ever in space, and Oliver the youngest person ever in space. My brother is the funniest person ever in space, uh, for sure. I have b b before. I want to do a couple of uh, more things before we maybe go to next questions, which is um, I want to recognize two people who, here in the audience. We are honored today to have uh, Alan Shepard's daughters, Laura and Julie. Could you stand up just briefly so we could say? <laughs> Of course, uh, Alan Shepard was a, a Apollo moonwalker and has a gi gigantic list of accomplishments. But for our purposes today, uh, the thing that is most interesting about Alan Shepard is that he is the namesake for this vehicle, New Shepard, and that is because the, pro the mission profile that we did today is very similar to the one that Alan flew when he became the first American in space, uh, I guess 60-ish years ago. So it, that is, uh, we are very honored to have you guys here. Thank you for joining us. It, it, it's incredible. I'm, I, I got some pictures with them backstage, and I know those are getting blown up big. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, and then I have a couple of things to show. Let's, uh, can we start? Do you want to talk about the couple of things we flew? Like the, go ahead. Oh, we did. Um, so we had the opportunity to bring with us, uh, it was actually on loan from uh, the Explorers Club, uh, we were able to fly with a piece of canvas from the Wright Flyer. Um, so the, the plane that the Wright brothers flew, um, we brought a piece of that canvas with us, um, which was really powerful, as well as um, a bronze uh, medallion uh, that was made from uh, the first uh, hot air balloon flight um, in 1783, which was the first time um, man ever uh, you know, left the earth in controlled flight. So we were very thrilled to be able to bring both of those along with us. Um, and we brought those meeting. precious objects back. Yes, we did. <laughs> and the Explorers Club will be pleased yes, to hear that. Yes, they're very happy about that. And we have um, one more thing, which I would actually just like to show you. If you could, who, who has the goggles, could you please bring them up to me? You, yeah, would you hold that for me? This is incredible. So, all right, why don't you stand so you can yeah. use like a basic test. This, um, we also flew, uh, these are Amelia Earhart's goggles. <laughs> the ones she flew across the Atlantic with solo. Uh, and you can see she put tape over them to kind of make, have less light come in because uh, it was just so bright all the day and she was flying for so long. And they're just, I, I like to think that if Amelia were here, she'd be very, very proud of Wally. <laughs> I just can't, I can't resist doing this. <laughs> so, thank you, Amelia, wherever you are. We hope you're watching all of this. Thank you. She can use back. These are precious, precious cargo. There you go. And well, on that note, Wally. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please go ahead. Thank you, Lauren just reminded me. I have one more thing, which is, and Christina, I might need your help on this, but Mom, could you come up for a second? Where's my mom? Okay, you don't have to come up. I can come to you. I have, I wore this. I wore this necklace. I wore this necklace, and it is a uh, Blue Origin feather, and I wore it up into space, and now it's for you. Okay. And now, Wally, last but not least, uh, Amelia Earhart, what a, what a lovely uh, transition. An aviation icon and now an aerospace, a space icon. What was it like? <laughs> Woo! I can't tell you. 
<laughs> I had such a good instructor, he took us through everything that we were going to do. So when I went up this morning, the noise wasn't quite as bad, and we went right on up, and I saw darkness. I thought I was going to see the world, but we weren't quite high enough. And I felt great. It, 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 I felt like I was just laying down. I was just laying down, and I was going into space. And I want to thank you, sweetheart, because <laughs> you made it possible for me. I've been waiting a long time <laughs> to finally get it up there, and I've done a lot of astronaut training through the world, Russia, America, and I could always beat the guys on what <laughs> they were doing because I was always stronger, and I've always done everything on my own, and I didn't do dolls. I did outside stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I flew airplanes, and I had 19,000 some hours. I loved it, and I loved being here with all of you and the, your family and the, the four of us. It, we had a great time. It was, it was wonderful. True. I want to go again fast. <laughs> 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 and then, when I got off the ship, they gave me the tail end of one of the balloons, and I'm going to cherish that forever. <laughs> uh, and by the way, we can confirm that Wally, once again in training, outperformed the men on the mission. A hundred percent. I was going to say, she beat all the, the, the three boys up to the top of the crew access tower. <laughs> Everybody saw that. There's video footage. We have proof. Indeed, darling, you did. You did. Well, so, Wally Funk, now the world's... Uh, oldest astronaut to have ever gone to space and perhaps the first founding member of our Blue Origin uh, Frequent Flyer program. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's ready for it. <laughs> when I do lectures or wherever I am around the world in the United States, I'm only 45. <laughs> <laughs> You're being generous. I keep saying everybody, every time somebody says, oh, she's 82, I think there's a typo. You're 28, Wally. We know this. Well, now, well.